One of the important consequences of the healthy development of attachment relationships, especially in the first years of life, besides of what, been, what we've been discussing regarding how attachments that are not secure seem to be predicting uh, psychopathology later in life or even during childhood, but another thing, important thing is like attachment is also the basis on which other mental capacities are going to be developed. And one of these capacities, which is incredibly important, is the capacity for mentalizing or mentalization. Just to remind you a little bit what the uh, definition of this concept is, basically is um, the capacity of our imagination, if you want, to read behavior of the other people and also our own behavior as based on mental states. It sounds a bit complicated sometimes, but it has to do with the fact that I know that I have a mind and that it works in a certain way, and also that other people have minds that might work very similarly to mine, but not completely the same. So I am able to predict, for example, certain behavior by certain people because I imagine their mental state, but I know that my prediction maybe is not going to be um, the most accurate. I mean, I can see a person crying and I might think with a lot of probability on my side that that person is sad. But also at the same time I know that I cannot be a hundred percent sure that that person is sad just by seeing them crying because that behavior may come from other mental states as well. That thing, mentalization, which seems really simple when one explains it and actually the fact that it's carried out unconsciously, completely, automatically, is related to other certain concepts like empathy, mindfulness, psychological mindedness, uh, affect consciousness, a series of other uh, concepts in psychology, not necessarily psychoanalysis, that get subsumed, get under this umbrella concept of mentalization. What happens with mentalizing? That we all do it all the time, but we do it better at some point and worse at some point. Better when we are we don't have any anxiety, when we don't have fear, uh, when we are not under a big emotion. Mm -hmm. For example, we mentalize really well uh, when we're calm, but if we're very angry, we stop mentalizing. Let's think about um, the conversations and fights you've had with your romantic partner when you're angry at them. There are conversations that are not taking anywhere. No one is trying to get the other the other's mind in one's own mind in order to advance with the discussion. But also it happens when there is positive um, emotions, like love. Try to describe or ask someone who just fell in love to describe that person they fell in love with. It's also very not accurate. Mm -hmm. Basically what I'm saying here is mentalization, this capacity that should be so obvious and, um, and that we apply especially when we're with other people all the time, that capacity doesn't work well when we are under the activation of the attachment system. It means that we're feeling a big interpersonal emotion, being it fear and anxiety, uh, anger, or also love and other emotions that might be positive. And what is important of the relationship between mentalization and attachment is precisely that mentalization, mentalizing has roots in the attachment theory and research. Not only is a conceptual root in the sense that if you have a good attachment figure, a parent that is able to hold your mind as a baby in their mind, interpret it and act accordingly. If uh, you don't have that, it's going to be really difficult for mentalizing to develop well. And we develop well, I don't mean that we're going to develop a mentalization that is inaccurate. It's just that it's going to go offline, it's going to disconnect, it's going to not work at a lower threshold of this big emotions that I was telling you about. So some people might have the same amount of stress, but a person is going to keep mentalizing and being able to understand the social world while another person might be too stressed and mentalization goes offline and people start thinking that everyone is against them or that people have bad intentions, etc, etc. It has to do mentalizing with like being able to, to reflect on the mind of oneself and the other. Mm -hmm. And also, not only to reflect, but get to know them. And one of these objects that we need to get to know, one of these people we need to get to know, is ourselves.
there is a lot of research on this, um, especially in the fact that how people who have um, attachment style that is not secure, how do they manage in social situations? And for example, in children, um, five and a half years of age, uh, you put them all together and you measure their attachment style with the um, strange, strange situation procedure and then you see how competent they are around their peers in kindergarten, etc. Secure children are more able to realize what the other is thinking, feeling, to predict what is going to be their behavior, to have better relationship with other people. Uh, these other peers find them funny and uh, good company and they want to always have uh, people to play with, etc. Mm -hmm. While certain specific insecurity subtypes have a different risk for specific types of, um, of not being competent. So you get children that are more insecure, uh, they might be more dismissive and they're more aggressive, let's say, with their peers. While children who show, let's say, preoccupied insecure attachment, uh, they might be a bit of a drag for their peers and the peers prefer to avoid them to a certain extent because they're always trying to get um, their attention. And disorganized attachment, the same. We know that disorganized is a bit of a mixture between everything. And, and this kind of thing doesn't vary with age, doesn't vary with gender. Are, uh, these are results from uh, empirical studies that actually uh, show that it is a very, very direct relationship between how competent you are with peers, with other people, and how was your attachment security. Basically, what we're not saying here is how good are you at mentalizing if you are securely attached. But also, attachment is not only important uh, for the development of mentalizing capacities, of being able to function in society by assuming that other people have a mind and that they have a behavior that you can predict, uh, but you cannot predict completely, etc. And that you get different perspectives because you know that different people might see things differently, which is another thing that mentalizing allows. It's not only important for the development. When we think of the relationship between attachment and mentalizing, also, for example, is the other way around. The fact that a parent with a poor mentalizing capacity will have a child with a higher risk of having insecure attachment. There, there are different risk factors in order to know, for example, if a child is going to have an insecure attachment or not. We, they, are all, they are all subsumed in this category called maternal sensitivity that we've explained in other videos, but also there are other things like a, um, an, a mother that is an adolescent has a more risk of having an insecure child, or there's a non-biological relationship, or there is a preterm birth or, or very low, uh, low birth weight. Uh, when the mom has a psychopathology like depression, for example, or when they abuse substances, um, etc. Mm -hmm. All these things go in detriment of maternal sensitivity, which can provoke insecure attachment and even uh, be at the basis of maltreatment and, and trauma. Mm -hmm. This is important because what is failing there in the parent is the capacity to mentalize their child, meaning trying to see this baby, a couple of years, a baby that cannot even speak, and try to see what this baby is thinking, what this baby is feeling, and to respond accordingly. Mm -hmm. That is basically mentalizing, it's holding someone else's mind in our own mind. And in the case of attachment relationships, for in order to have a parent that is going to uh, provoke the virtual cycle that attachment means, you need a parent that is able to mentalize. So the relationship between mentalization and attachment is double fold. On the one hand, if you don't have a secure attachment when you are a child, the development of your capacities for mentalizing is going to be diminished as well, or it's going to be more difficult uh, during life. But also the relationship between mentalizing and attachment is if the mother or the primary attachment figure cannot mentalize well because of their own history, then the attachment of the child has more risk to be an insecure attachment.